painting. Hi everyone, my name's Kieran from 81 Vintage and welcome back to my channel. In today's episode we're turning this old cabinet and making it into a folk art and style piece. I picked this piece up for £5 off Facebook Marketplace and knew that centre panel would be perfect for some statement artwork. Unfortunately the front had a crack in it and a design that I needed to deal with later. I want to remove this panel at the top. First of all, it's loose and it's broken. So these screws are quite old and they're filled with paint and dirt. I actually find it's easier to put a screwdriver in and then just wag, wiggle it down the groove. And what that will do is that will just open up the groove a little bit more. And usually you can get it out a bit easier. This piece has been painted before, it looks like Annie Sloan or something, it's had a wax coat over it. I'm not too worried about that, I'm just going to go straight over the top in Fernie Paint, which is our brand of paint. Uh, I'm using the colour Black Knight, which is our black as black. And um, because it has been previously painted, I'm not going to uh, treat it or anything, but what I am going to do is use a soft brush. And what I find is that when you're doing a second coat or you're doing a piece that's already painted or has um, got a finish over the top of it, if you use a softer brush, then you'll have to do less coats. And I usually like to start by painting the back of the piece first. Fernie paint is a water-based paint. It's um, a matte paint. It doesn't have a sealer built into it. Um, and it's highly pigmented, so you usually get a really good coverage. Uh if you're painting a piece that uh, sits directly onto the floor, doesn't have legs or anything, a good tip is to raise it up with a scrap piece of wood. I'm just going to paint straight over the hardware. It's actually a layer of fluff down here, but I'm just going to work that into the finish. I'm just going to call that texture. Let's go straight over the top. So that's painted. I'm going to let that dry for a bit. And so I'm just sitting here working on a new stencil for this cabinet and I just thought I would share the inspiration and where this has come from. If you're interested in picking up any of our stencils or the paint used in this project, head over to our website at 81vintage.co.uk and you can see all of the items we have. So I found this graphic online which is a, a folk art um bird and folk art I just think translates really really well into stencils so I've taken this image and I've used it as a basis for the design and then I've used Photoshop and I have taken that design and filled it out to make sure that you get all your val the best value for your money so what we've done is we've filled out most of the sheet so that you can use either all of it you could just use, maybe use this part or you could use this part normally paint the inside of my pieces unless they really need it um, and I don't usually paint the edge of the drawers either or the doors because um, paint build up can get in there and it's also one of the really vulnerable areas to um, for paint to scratch when you're opening and closing the cabinet but the previous person did so I've just um, followed suit the edge here they've not done a particularly neat edge with their paint and my paint's not covering over it i could either put a new line in here or i'm actually just going to use a um, a blade and i'm just going to scrape that away I needed to fill in that centre moulding detail that was on the cabinet originally, so I mixed some filler with some PVA glue which just helps it stick, and then applied it in with as best as I could and used this old blade just to get it nice and flat. So I'm going to leave this to dry now for a while and I'm going to go and have a cup of tea with the dogs. Attack a doggy too. 
Tic Tac having a scratch. Once it had been sanded, it still looked a bit uneven, so I decided to make that work in my favour. I used some plaster bandage, just two strips, and applied that with warm water, spread it out, and that gave me an old world style canvas look to start working on. Once it was dry, I trimmed the edges with a sharp craft knife and then painted it in with the same colour black that I'd used on the rest of the piece. I then cut the stencil out on our laser once it was all set up and ready, and our stencil comes in two sizes. So it comes in an A4 size and this A3 size, which is two pieces of A4 that you line up. And I decided to go for the bigger version to make more of an impact on this piece. Because it's such a small area, it was difficult to get it to lay flat, but I wasn't worried about that because I want to use the stencil more like an adult paint by numbers. So I'm just going over this with white acrylic paint to start and that is just going to give me a base colour and an outline of the pattern to work to. Don't worry, I know it looks pretty messy now, but I'm using this as an outline and then I'm just going to go in with some different acrylic paints and quite vibrant colours and I'm just going to add in some detail. I've been lying here for two. I don't know what else to do I want to get away from every little thing Just to try to make it through I've been thinking about my options Every detail in my head But it doesn't really matter Nothing matters so I cry instead I want this piece to look like it's been hand painted hundreds of years ago and so I'm just going to go in and really try and follow that folk art theme. If you've seen any of the other painting I do, you'll know I'm a fan of the one sit method. This means that you only have one session to be able to work on this piece and you can't come back to that piece once you've finished with it. This prevents you from procrastinating and playing around with something that doesn't really need any more finessing needs a little bit more time to dry so I'm gonna go and get out of the house for a little bit and I'm gonna go to the local charity shop and see if there's anything there. So I'm just on the way back in and there is a lonely cricket in the grass and we never get crickets around here. I could hear him as I was walking up the path. So this is what I got. I picked a frame, paid a pound for it and I think I can turn that into £65 quite easily with just a couple of hours of work. So if you want to see how I do that, be sure to hit that subscribe button and if you're enjoying this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up as well. I've been asking every question Cause I haven't got a clue Why's it gotta be me? What the hell am I supposed to do? Just water 
and a microfiber cloth. So I'm spraying on the cloth just to get that damp and then uh, I'm going to wet distress this piece. So I'm going to, this paint is water soluble so it does wet distress um, and I'm just quickly wiping it over the surface partly to remove the dust and partly to um, distress it where I want. So I carried on a little bit last night and I've actually distressed the piece and then I am sealing it with a uh, matte spray sealer just for ease. I could brush something on but this is just going to allow me to do multiple coats in a very short time. I ain't got nothing left. And I know I shouldn't be doing this inside. And this is the final result. I think this worked really well and I really love its old world charm. I'm going to probably be looking to sell this piece for around about 50 60 pounds. Let me know down in the comments box below what you think of the pricing and the final result. As always, if you'd like to get the paints and products that we used in this video, be sure to head over to 81vintage.co.uk. And thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next episode.